Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about tools for a startup. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what is from your perspective the best outbound tools for a startup to use? I'm not sure, I, I'm guessing now what when you talk about out, outbound, I've never heard that term, but I'm guessing you're talking about third-party services, like things to use in order to run an effective startup. Uh, so the ones that I've used and the ones that I run and the ones that my friends who work for startups and so forth have had the greatest success with, uh, it doesn't really, it's not necessarily a specific tool. It's actually just a, a way of working. Uh, I'm a big believer in uh, for at least at the very least for small scale like for something that is in the state of a startup because I like to say that there are life cycles to software so in the beginning of things the most important thing for you is to be able to move really fast with feature development that is the main thing uh, because you're basically fighting the clock. If you cannot get your product to a point where people are, you're either earning money from the thing or people are willing to pay you, invest or whatever your, however your business model looks like, right? You will not be able to survive the next month because you don't have any money. So development speed is key. And there is today nothing faster for development speed than serverless. Not that I know of at the very least. And I, well, I don't know all the ways that you can ship software. But I suspect that I know a lot of them. Uh, there's nothing that's going to move faster. And the simple reason is not because I'm, you know, saying the serverless is some type of silver bullet. It's just that, in terms, because the thing that you want to optimize for is the time that you have to work on business logic, things that actually are value building for the product that you are building. You don't want to deal with deployments. You don't want to pay for like a, a sophisticated cloud solutions or things like that uh, the, when nobody's really you might not even be using it. Uh, you don't want to have to build, uh, set up databases and manage those and like all of this stuff. And you don't want to deal with validation and all or logging, etc. Et you don't want to invest. And especially if you're a kind of junior issue, like mid-level and you don't have like a master level understanding of all this stuff, you don't want to learn and delay yourself so much in these stages. Because as I said, the most important thing is that you have a server somewhere that can take in some network requests and do some business logic and here, here is your money, right? Uh, and I don't know of anything that is more effective at doing that than a serverless setup. It doesn't really matter which one you're using. If you're using like Amazon's, uh, like the like an API gateway with Lambda, or if you're using GCP, or if you're using I don't know. I mean, there are many others. I can't remember the name that I use. The service that I use to it's a GCP product. Uh, oh, I can't remember it now. But it's basically the same sort of deal, right? It's just the GCP um, infrastructure behind it, and then it's packaged in a nice little. A little way, way for you, and there are many services like that that just helps you set up like your serverless deployment and things like that. Firebase, Firebase was the name. So, uh, I mean, Azure has the same sort of thing, right? So, all the main providers will have this for you, uh, and also I'm suspecting minor companies who are doing the same sort of thing. And so, I would give that as the biggest tip because just by going into this uh, to serverless, it's the thing that is going to allow you to work the fastest without with minimum setup of everything else because then everything else becomes basically here is an SDK and here is like this entire ecosystem of like everything from databases to logging to etc etc and in many cases as I said you can get this up and running with almost no effort because there are even tools that will help you just set up a basic uh, um, product uh, setup with the resources that you need and what's beautiful about that is that even though you might want to scale into more serious work in the future, it very much depends on the startup, of course, but uh, you can scale this thing or you can transition this thing fairly easily into, you know, more traditional things uh, like a monolith or if you want to go microservices or whatever at the later stage. But in the early days of the startup, there's really no reason, and it's proven by quite a lot of companies, even like really big companies, that serverless is a very effective way for you 
to build applications. There's nothing, you know, it's not an unknown, it's not unstable, unproven ways of doing it. I have a friend who's like, he's, they're running their entire startup on that. And it's a pretty decent going startup at this point. And it's all serverless. Because at the end of the day, the, and that's the thing that I think is so genius about the serverless concept, uh, is the, the idea is so simple. At the end of the day, in almost all of the work that a software developer is doing in terms of the thing that is making value for the company is to write business logic. But unfortunately, or rather due to like how things have been working in the past, you have to set up all this extra stuff like databases and like you create a server instance and configure that and like etc etc etc. But at the end of the day, the thing that is making value is the controller or the action handler, depending on which uh, like terminology you want to use. The thing that, the function that is mapped to the endpoint, or to the URL. Because when you hit the URL, you're hitting a function. And if you can only create that function, and everything else is abstracted away from you, and you can just very conveniently consume it with the storage and so forth, because almost everything else is storage. Like, all the, 90% of the time you need logging and storage and that's pretty much it and these things if they can just be set up for you and you don't have to think about redundancies and like all this extra stuff that comes with like a qualitative uh, setup it's actually going to save you a lot of time and it's the same cost you would pay if you did it from scratch but here it's uh, it's the abstraction thing right if you need a lot of control which is very rare this might not be the right thing, but it's the same thing I say to people about, okay, Frederick, do you like, I don't know, as an example, do you prefer using Next.js or Gatsby or are you using Express and so forth? And I go, well, uh, it depends on what I'm doing or like Bootstrap or use, well, any framework, I say the same thing. If you're going to use a framework, you have to realize what you're getting and what you're sacrificing. You're sacrificing your ability to control each piece of your process, like you get to the lower details or the lower levels of the thing that you're doing. So if that's not an issue, the abstraction is actually very good because the abstraction should increase your velocity. And in a startup, velocity is everything because if you don't make it to the next paycheck, the company is over. But if you can get to the next paycheck in a decently stable way and you get that paycheck, you can hire more people or you can you know you can transition later because that's the beautiful part about software even if it's a bitch and a half to do it sometimes it can be refactored into something more sustainable so what i want you to take away from this is that for me there's only really one really important outbound tool or third party tool for a startup and it, as i said it very much depends on the startup but it's the only one that i would say uh, if you're starting fresh that you should prioritize and that is to try to use serverless in the beginning if that's not feasible for you then there is no one tool like uh, you're gonna have to depending on your setup there are so many solutions and then we're gonna have to talk about like each of these pieces as I said like it's like the list is gonna be long uh, there are so many options and that's why I think serverless is such a good fit for small scale startups or like even mid scale, I mean even up to the larger scales, I mean, as I said even really large corporations are using using it. Uh, so that would be my biggest tip for you if you're going to start uh, start something up and the be added benefit there is that the bis like the, the finance model or the way that um, uh, serverless usually works is both in favor for you when it comes to development velocity and it's usually in favor cost-wise because in many cases it's actually cheaper for you to run serverless in the early days than it is uh, than having like full-fledged boxes and doing either using VMs or if you're using like uh, Kubernetes or things like that. Uh, that usually is more expensive and so to me serverless is pretty much a win-win the only downside with it is if you are more familiar with some other way of working or if your specific programming language isn't supported but hopefully that is something that you can sort of work around have a great day